Hey, girl. How's it going? It feels like it's been such a long time since I have seen you. Come here and give a hug and a kiss. Come on, don't be shy. This doesn't count as cheating, you know. It hasn't even been that long, Jackie. You're always so dramatic. We see each other all the time, you know. I don't know why you always act as though we only meet up once a year or something like that. Don't you dare say that. We never see you at all anymore. It's been close to a month since we last hung out. Maybe it's not once a year, but only once a month is nowhere near enough. You never come to our girls' nights anymore. It's no fun without you, seriously. We will have to find a replacement for you soon if you don't start coming again. What do you mean it's no fun? You can't have fun with me and Amy? Is Laura really that much better than us? Oh, shut up. You know that's not what I mean. But the more the merrier, and I know that you think the same as me. <laughs> Quiet down, please. Everyone is looking at us. And has it really been nearly a month since I last saw you? I can't believe that. It is true. We haven't seen you since you went to Germany for that conference or whatever it is. Wow. Time really does fly then, doesn't it? I honestly didn't think it was that long. But when you mentioned Germany, then it definitely was a while ago. You didn't even tell us about it. How was it? What kind of men do they have over there? I heard that they are all really serious and don't know how to have any fun. Is that true? It must have been really boring if it is. I can't imagine going on a date with a guy who doesn't at least try to make me laugh. There's no way that is true. I mean, they basically invented beer, didn't they? How could they not know how to party if they invented the best party drink around? I wouldn't know, to be honest. Just what kind of girl do you think I am, Jackie? That's what I would like to know. I was there for a medical conference for my job. I wasn't there to party or to meet new guys either, for that matter. Oh my god, that's so boring. Didn't you even have any time off? And there must have been at least some hot doctors, right? I did have some time off, but only a day here and there, so I didn't want to be going around and getting drunk so that I would be hung over the next day. I was in a pretty small town as well. It's not exactly Berlin or anything near that size, so there was very little to do there. But the nature was really beautiful. I wish I had more time there to myself. I would have liked to run a car and just drive around the countryside. All the little towns were just incredibly cute. They all look like little gingerbread houses. Um, how old are you again? I could have sworn that we were roughly the same age. Did you turn into a grandma sometime in the last month since we last saw you? The countryside? Gingerbread houses? You really went to a new country that you have never been to before and that's all you have to say for yourself? Oh, lay off. You know that I never like to party as much as you two do. I don't know why you keep thinking that I do. I'm not ashamed of my grandma tendencies. I like the quiet countryside. I think it's beautiful and relaxing. At least answer the question about whether there were any hot doctors at the conference and then we will leave you alone. The answer to that question is no. I know that it isn't the answer that you want to hear, but there it is. How disappointing. I always thought the doctors were so hot. Not all of them, but I wouldn't mind meeting a hot doctor or surgeon to sweep me off my feet. It was about medical research, you know. A lot of the people there were much older than me. The average age was probably well over 50. Damn, I guess we're really not going to get anything fun out of you then, are we? I was hoping for at least a little bit of gossip from you. I think that what I am talking about is fun. You two don't want to hear anything else about the pristine and wonderful countryside villages that Western Germany has to offer? Oh, God, no. Please, make it stop. I've been to the countryside here, at least. And it's not something that I would like to repeat if I don't have to. I'm a city girl at heart and always will be. How about you just get straight to the good stuff? You told us that you have some big news, right? Well, I would rather hear about that than anything else about the countryside. I do have some really big news. Actually, I have two pieces of news for you today. You're really in luck. Let's hear it then. You disappear for a while and we hear nothing from you and now we get two juicy bits of news? That's right. There has been a lot happening in my life. Well, the first thing is that I am buying a house. Or rather, I have just bought one. What? Are you serious? 
How on earth are you managing to do that? Don't tell me that you're going to move to Kentucky or somewhere like that. Because if you do, we are not going there to visit you. No way. Maybe you can send us a video every once in a while if they even have internet over there. Thanks, guys. I am so glad that our friendship is so strong that a short flight to Kentucky is too much for it to handle. Wait, you're not actually moving to Kentucky, though, are you? I was only saying that as a joke. No, no, I am not moving to Kentucky. You know that I have been saving a lot of money ever since college and I was approved for a mortgage. Don't think that I bought it outright or anything like that. I couldn't even do that in my dreams, I don't think. My brain wouldn't even allow me to imagine that sort of thing. I see. So you're going to be paying the house off until you die then? I'm so happy for you, honey. Jackie, that's enough joking around. That's a really big achievement, Laura. I am really happy for you. What's it like? Is it really out the way somewhere? Or still decently located? Thanks, Lisa. Well, it is definitely in the suburbs and it's not huge or anything either. I decided to go with something a little older because I like the feel that they have to them and I think I might renovate sections of it bit by bit. That will also help bring the property value up without actually expanding it or anything like that. Okay, okay. So how many rooms are we talking if it's as small as you say it is? There are only two bedrooms, one bathroom, but the kitchen is quite big and so is the living room, so I am pretty happy with it. You know that I like quaint little things and I can't wait to decorate it to my own style. Yes, yes. You can recreate a little bit of that German countryside that you have been talking about here in the American suburbs. So then, what's the other bit of big news? Could it be? Did it finally happen? Oh my god. Please tell us that you finally broke up with that loser, Harry. You did, didn't you? Um, actually, I am getting married to that loser, Harry. He proposed and we are engaged now. Oh... Wow. Is that so? Oh, I am so sorry. That, it... That really wasn't what we were expecting to hear from you just now. We were just joking. Kind of. Look, it's okay. I know that neither of you ever really liked him much. It hasn't exactly been a secret, you know? But he just sucks so bad! I can't believe that you have been with him for as long as you have. You could do so much better than that, too. You're a beautiful, educated woman. And what is he? He is an unemployed bum who lives with his parents. You could pick almost any guy you set your sights on and have him by the end of the day, but you still choose to be with that useless idiot. She's right, Laura. I might have been with some bad guys in the past, but I really think he takes the cake. And that is really saying something, too. Just what is it that you see in him? And you've broken up and gotten back together more times than I can count. He's not useless. I know that he hasn't really been employed recently, or for a while. But that's not the only important thing that there is. We do go through ups and downs as well, but what kind of relationship doesn't have that? Yeah, but what kind of relationship has so many? That's the big issue here. We've had a bumpy ride, okay? But it's smoothing out right now, and I am looking forward to being with him still. I know that you don't like him, and a lot of people think that I shouldn't be with him. But you also know that I am not going to listen to your opinions on this either. I love him, and that's all there is to it. And I think that is more important than whether he has a good job or not. Okay, okay, we get it. I know that you have always been that sort of hopeless romantic. I just think you're wrong about that. And we're not saying this because we want to be mean either. We say this because we know that you deserve the world. And I don't think he's going to give you anything close to it. I know that you're saying it out of love and care for me, but I don't want to hear that right now, okay? I'm getting married! I want you to be happy for me just this one time, okay? Say what you want about him between yourselves, but he's my fiancé now. Can you at least tone it down or just stop completely in front of me? Okay, sure. Now that you're properly getting hitched, then maybe we can consider him out of bounds. At least most of the time. Congratulations, Laura. And we are happy for you in our own way. We might think differently, but if this is what you want, then that's great. Yeah, and you're definitely doing a hell of a lot better than the two of us. We've barely been on two dates between us in the last month. Speak for yourself. Both of those dates were mine. 
What do you mean, between us? It still counts as between us. I don't care if you're the only one who has all the points. Let me show some of it in this way. I'm going to go with Jackie on this one, Lisa. That is what between means, after all. Whatever, whatever. So, are you guys going to have a wedding and are we invited? Of course you will be invited. We're going to have a fairly small wedding, though. So we're thinking just close family and a couple of friends from each side sort of thing. But you two are definitely at the top of my list, so there is nothing for you to worry about there. How come you're not going to have a big blowout wedding? I want a party! It's so expensive to have a wedding. I always knew that they were pricey, but I also thought that it was because people were just going crazy with what they had there. But even for something rather simple, it can really add up. And, you know, now that I have to start paying for this mortgage, I don't want to waste money on something that I don't have to. You're not going to be paying for this whole wedding on your own, are you? I know that Harry doesn't have a job, but that's still crazy for you to pay for it all on your own. Luckily, I will have some help from my parents, so I don't have to pay for it all on my own. If I had to, then we might not have had a ceremony at all. A mortgage isn't that cheap, and I want to make sure that I don't fall behind on any payments. He's really not going into this marriage with flying colors, is he? He can't even pay for anything himself. Jackie, what did I just say before? Please don't say this kind of thing to me right now. Sorry, sorry. I just can't help it. I'll try to stop, but it will take some time for me to get used to the idea of not saying anything bad. Then, how about this? I have a question. Any idea on the date, at least? Is it going to be coming up soon? I have no idea what the date might be at all right now, but it will be within the year. Maybe even sooner, really. Since we're not going to have a huge one, it means that all the planning doesn't have to take as long. And since fewer people are going to be there, we probably won't have to give as much notice for people to make it, too. Okay, well, make sure to give us enough notice to get prepared. I will, don't worry. You two will be the first to know when I find out myself. Oh, Laura, you just look so beautiful today. The dress is perfect. I have just been staring at you all night long. Thanks, Mom. I love it, too. I'm so glad that I decided on this simple dress. The other one looked nice in the store, but I think that this was definitely the way to go. Yes, you really look stunning. I thought that I would just burst out crying when I saw you to take you down the aisle today. You should have done that then, Dad. It would have made for a great photo or video, and I have barely ever seen you cry. You know that I couldn't allow myself to do something like that. And then if I had tears in my eyes, I wouldn't have been able to see you at all. Wow, nice save. I'm glad that you two seem to be enjoying yourselves. I was a little worried if I am being honest. Well, as you know, we have always been a little wary of Harry. Never really too sure if he was the one for you. But it is still your wedding day and we are happy to see that you are happy yourself. I really do hope that you have made the right decision, though. I really do. Your mother is right. You might see something in him that nobody else does, and that includes us. I am still scratching my head about why you picked him. Guys, please. Not on my wedding day at the very least. I have heard it all before, and I don't want to hear it anymore. My friends say the same thing, but I love him, and I have made my decision already. You're not going to change my mind now right after we have said our vows. We know, we know. We won't try to get in the way of you and Harry, I promise. We tried to dissuade you a long time ago and it didn't work. So we're not going to try that again now. We just both want you to remember that we love you and we will always be here for you no matter what. If anything happens or you start having problems or anything at all, we will be here for you and you can come to talk to us about it. And it doesn't matter how big or small that problem might seem either, got it? If it's small, then that's actually the best time to come and get some advice or just talk about it. It might do something to help stop it from turning into something much bigger with time. I know that. Thanks, guys. But I am sure that things will be fine. We have had some rough times, but things are better now. And they will continue to get better soon. I can just feel it. I know it in my heart. I will make sure to come to you if I have any of these problems. But for the time being, I don't want to talk about it anymore. I don't want to jinx anything, you know? 
Now, let's enjoy the rest of the night. Wow, this place really is something, isn't it? There's plenty of room for the two of us, and even some extra for once we have a kid. Come on, don't get ahead of yourself just yet. There is still time before something like that is in the cards. I know that you have baby fever, but I am adamant that we be in a good financial situation before we even start thinking about starting a family. I know, I know. You think that I don't know how straight-laced you are? We've been together for a long time at this point. I know you. But I also think that day might come sooner than you think it will. I just have a certain feeling. Yeah? And is that because you're finally going to go out and get a job to help support us? Because that's the only thing that I can think of that might bring that day closer. Of course I will. You know that I am going to do that. I promised and I am going to keep that promise. I really hope that you mean that, Harry. I have heard it lots of times before and, unfortunately, you never really did pull through. That's not true at all. You're acting like I have never had a job since we have been together. I am talking about a stable job. Not one that changes every week or so when you get bored or do something to piss off the managers. That kind of job isn't good enough to start a family on. And there is the mortgage now. There is a lot to think about, okay? I really want you to take this seriously for once. I am taking it seriously. I am going to get one of these stable jobs that you are talking about. I really want to believe you. I do believe you. I don't like saying this, but it's not really a secret from you anyway. You know that a lot of people told me not to marry you. They were really quite against it. But I have always stood up for you and ignored what they said to me about you. I really want you to help me prove them wrong. I know that you're a good guy and I know that you can pull through for me. I wouldn't have married you if I didn't really believe that. But I really want you to do that sooner rather than later, okay? I don't want to sound harsh, but this is really important. Don't you worry about a thing. I will show them and you what I am capable of. People can change, you know. I will prove that. This is going to be a new page for us together. I can swear on that. So you're going to go and look for a job right away then? Whoa, whoa. Who said anything about that? You have to give me at least a year to relax. What? Harry! What do you need a year for? And to relax after what? I'm only joking. Calm down and put that broom down too. I was only kidding. I will look for one soon. But give me at least until we get back from our honeymoon and then I will start the hunt. Don't mess with me like that. I don't know if you're being serious or not when it comes to this sort of thing. But why do you need to wait until then? Can't you just find one right away? The sooner the better. But think about it. If I get a job right before we go away on our honeymoon, they might not even let me take that time off, right? What's the point of starting a job, maybe even a good job, and then having it all go down the drain because they won't let me leave for that? And don't you dare say anything about us not going on the honeymoon. We're not missing that for anything. Hmm, maybe you do have a bit of a point there. But I have a job and will still be able to go. You don't see me trying to quit beforehand. That's completely different. You're established there and have worked for the company for a while. You can give them notice and all the rest of it. It's not the same as starting a brand new job and then immediately asking for time off. You get what I am saying, right? Yeah, I do. I don't really like it, but I do get it. Anyway, go make yourself useful and get the rest of the boxes from out of the car. I'm going to start unpacking a little in here while you bring the other stuff inside. But Harry... Yes, Laura, my sweet and beautiful wife. What else can I do for you? Make sure you keep your promise. I want you out looking for a job as soon as we get back. Got it? Got it. Hi, you two. Welcome back home. How was the flight? When did you arrive? Hi, Kate. We actually only arrived this morning, so we're both still a little tired. The flight wasn't too bad, though, as far as flights go. Oh my god, really? You must be exhausted. But you must also be hungry, right? Well, you've come to the right place for some delicious food. That's right. You know the Cape makes the best food this side of the country. That's quite a claim there, Dad. Have you really been to so many houses eating food made by other people's wives? 
I don't think you should be admitting that in front of mom. Harry, don't say things like that. It's not nice. Sorry, it was just a joke though. Calm down, calm down. Why can't anyone take a joke these days? Because all you do is joke and you are never serious. It's not nice to tease your parents, Harry. Be a little nicer. You too. Let me have some fun at least. These are all just some jokes between family. What's wrong with that? Yeah, yeah, whatever you say. So then, how was the honeymoon? Where did you two go again? It was fantastic. We went to Thailand. It was a little cheaper than going to a more, let's say, typical location for a honeymoon like Hawaii or Fiji or something. But it was something that I really enjoyed as well. I had never been to Asia before. Well then, you have to tell us all about it. What was it like over there? What was the best part about it? It's so hard to say what the best part about it was, to be honest. There was just so much new stuff on every corner. Isn't that right, Harry? Everything was so different from here. No, I would say that it's pretty easy to pick the best part. Drinking some cheap beers on the beach. What can be better than that? Of course you would say something like that, you moron. That's why we didn't ask you about it. Laura, ignore him. Tell us what you thought. I have to say that it was pretty nice to do what Harry said as well. I don't get to do that so much with work and all. So relaxing and just taking the time to watch the ocean was really nice for me. But apart from that, there was just so much. We spent some time both in Bangkok, which is the capital and a really busy city, and then down near the coast as well. It was really different in both places. Bangkok was crazy busy and there were just people everywhere. I have never seen a place like that in any other country that I have been to before. It's just so hard to imagine that many people living in such a small space. And what was it like? Was it dangerous? I have heard some pretty scary things about Thailand. Or at least I think it was about Thailand. I mean, it was poor in some areas and rich in others. The difference was quite big, but I wouldn't say that I ever felt in danger. I guess the main danger was whether you might be getting scammed out of a few extra dollars because you're a tourist. Well, it could certainly be a lot worse than that. A few extra dollars to the locals doesn't sound like a bad deal. He sure could have been. The people were really nice and they helped us around a lot even if they didn't speak English and we of course don't speak a single word of Thai. One lady even helped us to our hotel when we were lost in the middle of the road and had no idea where to go. We just tried to show her the address that we had written down and didn't even know if it was right or not. But she helped us there and even spoke to the concierge for us to explain that we were guests. Oh, look at that. That is so lovely. Isn't that lovely, Michael? Yes, honey. It's very lovely. And then there was the food. It was so cheap and so delicious. And people were selling it out of street carts and in tiny shops that were just everywhere. I think Thai food might really be my favorite type of food now. You know you go to a Thai place here and they really only have a few things on the menu. Pad Thai, green curry, you know, the basics. But over there, there was so much stuff that I don't even know the name of because I couldn't read the menu. But I would just point to something and I knew that it would be delicious no matter what it was. It was damn spicy though. I thought that my tongue would burn off by the end of it. It was really something. Is it really as bad as they say? I mean the spice. I wonder if I would even be able to eat anything there at all. Yes and no. There was quite a lot that wasn't spicy, and then the spicy food was like eating straight flames. And like I said, since we didn't really know what was what, it was a bit of a lucky dip of sorts whether we got something spicy or not. I think that Harry got the spicy stuff more often than not, though. I sure did. I was starting to think that they were doing it on purpose or something. But even though it was spicy, it still did taste good. Well, you could taste of it before your tongue was crying out for water anyway. I have to agree with Laura that the food really was something. Big portions, good food. And you basically only pay pennies for it. It really is nice to go to a country that has a favorable exchange rate for us. And did you even have your own pennies to pay for your food then? Or was Laura paying for you as she always does? Oh, come on, Dad. That's a little harsh, isn't it? It's not harsh, it's the truth. Laura has always been paying for you. It's okay, Michael. Now that we're back from the honeymoon, Harry has promised to really start looking for a job. Isn't that right, Harry? That's right. Don't worry, I haven't forgotten about that at all. 
I didn't want to find one before the honeymoon and then try to request time off straight away, so I was waiting until we got back. Really? This loafer is going to finally get into the workforce? Come off it, Mom. You don't have to be like that. Why did you invite us over anyway? Just to make fun of me in front of my wife? We invited you over because we wanted to hear what Laura had to say about your trip. Well, she believes me and trusts me, you know. Why can't you two do the same? We have heard enough from you about all the things that you are going to do and when and why. I believe it when it happens, but not before. Anyway, the food is going to be ready soon, so let's go and set the table and we can keep talking there. You know, Laura, if you could find out what some of those foods that you liked so much were and told me, then maybe I could even try to learn to cook it for you. Of course, it wouldn't be the same as the one that you had, but I could do my best. Oh, that would be great, Kate. I will try to find some photos and English names of the dishes. They have their own alphabet, you see, so I couldn't read a single thing. Not even how the names sound. Wow, you don't say. Hey, how's the job search going? Found anything yet? There must be a lot of positions to go through, right? Oh, not really. I am looking through some listings, but I haven't applied for anything just yet. I am also organizing my resume, you know? Okay, but you are actually doing that, aren't you? I don't want to have to keep reminding you about it and act like your mom. Of course I am. Just leave me to it and I will get it done like I said that I would. I thought you trusted me on this. Yeah, I want to, but I also want to get some updates about it as well. You haven't told me anything so far. Let me know if there is anything I can do to help, like with writing your resume with you and all that sort of stuff. I might be of some help in that way. Or we could even practice for an interview together once you have one lined up. I will be fine, don't worry about it. I will look at some resume writing tips online and write my own. Mmm, fine. But please make sure to keep me in the loop and tell me when you have started applying for some jobs. What do you mean, jobs? Do you want me to get more than one? I really think one is just fine. Yeah, you only need one, but you have to apply for more than one at a time and go to interviews. You're never guaranteed to get something that you apply for, you know. That's not how the job searching process works. Sure, sure. Well, I will let you know about it as you ask me to. Good. Anyway, I have some other news. I am going to another conference soon. My work is sending me. Really? You're going away again so soon? And how soon is soon? I will be leaving in four days. It's a little last minute because they were initially going to send someone else instead of me, but they got sick and can't make it anymore. They have the flu and it's pretty bad. Luckily, I get to go instead though I do feel bad for them. I see. That's really quite soon. And where are you going this time? How long will you be gone for? This time I am going to France. It's really nice to get to go to different countries like this. And I will be there for just one week. Just one week? That's ages. What do you mean just? What am I supposed to do here without my wife around to keep me company? Oh, it's not that long, really. And I will be busy the entire time, so I know that it will go really quickly for me. You will be fine on your own. Man, you get to travel the world and see the sights while I have to be stuck here all on my own? That's pretty lame. Well, when you get a job and save up some money, then you can travel to wherever you want as well. And it's not like I am going there for a holiday either. I have to be at meetings and take notes and all that sort of stuff. I doubt that I will have any time at all to see the sights, as you put it. If I am lucky, I will have the evenings to myself, but I will probably be too tired to even do anything at that point. Still, a trip is a trip, and it's always a nice feeling to go somewhere, right? I don't want to be stuck in these suburbs all on my own. Is there any chance that they can send someone else instead of you? I'm not going to give up this opportunity. This sort of thing is really important for me, and I wasn't even really supposed to be the one going this time. Sorry, but I am not going to give this chance up just because you don't want to be alone for a week or so. You're totally fine to be here on your own. Okay, okay, I know. I am just going to miss you and I'm being a little bit dramatic. If you keep yourself busy with the job search, then you won't even notice that I am gone. And I will remind you before I go, but I will say it now too. I don't want to come home to find this place to be a mess. You better keep it clean or there will be hell to pay. I know, I know.
come on, I'm not a kid. I can clean up after myself. I hope so. Prove it to me. I'm back! Did you miss me? See, it wasn't as long as you were making it out to be, was it? Hey there. It was the slowest week of my life. Of course I missed you. How was the flight? Long and boring as always. It's nice to be able to stretch and just walk normally. Boring? Was there nothing good to watch on the plane? They should usually have lots of good new movies, right? I mean, sure, they did have a lot, but there wasn't really anything that I wanted to watch, to be honest. I put something on, I don't even remember what it was anymore, but I ended up not really paying any attention and just going in and out of sleep. I don't know how you can do that. I never sleep on planes. I always prefer to just stay up and watch movies the entire time. It helps to skip the jet lag as well when I land. You have to work smarter, not harder, Laura. Very smart, Harry. Very smart. But it's not good to skip sleep. You should always try to sleep each night, even when you're on a plane. Yes, Doctor. I will make sure to do that. Don't make fun of me. I am being serious. And I see that the house actually looks like it's in a decent state. Well done. I have expected it to be much worse than it is right now. Right? What did I tell you? I can look after myself, you know. Hold on a second, though. What's all this stuff? I have never seen it before. Whose shoes are these? Do you have someone over right now? Ah, uh, about that. You could say that there is someone over, yeah. He's not in the house right at the moment, though. What are you talking about? What is that even supposed to mean? There is someone over, but they're not in the house? But their shoes are here as well? That doesn't make any sense. Let me explain. But you have to promise not to get mad, okay? I'm not going to promise anything. And I don't like the sound of this. What did you do? Remember my brother, Will? I know that you don't know each other very well, but you must have met him a few times. Yes, I do. But I haven't seen him for a very long time. What about him? Yeah, he went out of state for a while and now he has come back home, so to speak. Well, he is living here with us now. What? What do you mean he is living with us? Like he is living in this house? Yeah, what else could that mean? I told him that he could use the spare room since we're not using it for anything at the moment. You can't be serious right now. What the hell, Harry? You can't do something like this. What do you mean? Why not? What's wrong with having my brother over? There is a difference between inviting him over and then having him live here with us. And you didn't even think to ask me about this first? You just bring him in while I am out of the country. That's not okay. This is the kind of decision that requires both of us to make it. Why would that even be the case? He's my brother. What else was I supposed to do? Just say no to him and tell him to sleep on the street somewhere? Would you have said no if I had asked you? I don't know. Maybe. We've just gotten married and moved in here together. Why should we have to live with someone else? And why couldn't you ask me about it first? It wouldn't have been that hard, right? It would have taken you like 30 seconds to send me a text or to call. I didn't think that this would be that big of a deal. It just didn't even enter my head, to be honest. Then why did you try to make me promise you to not get mad? You must have known that I wouldn't be happy about this. I thought that you might freak out a bit because this is coming as a surprise. Then if you could figure out that much, you should have also figured out that you needed to discuss this with me first. This is my house. You can't just invite strangers into my house without talking to me about it first. Especially to live here. What are you talking about? He's not a stranger. He's my brother. I didn't just pull some random guy off of the street and have him live here. But I barely know him. So to me, he is basically a stranger, even if you two are related. That doesn't matter. It doesn't count. And what better way to get to know him than this? He is family, after all. Then why couldn't he stay with your parents? They also have space now that you have moved out of there and are living here with me. There's no good reason that I can see that says he should live here with us instead of with them. He doesn't exactly get along well with my parents anymore. He had a falling out with them and they wouldn't let him stay. At least most likely not. They aren't even really on speaking terms, so he didn't even ask. 
What did he do that was so bad that your parents wouldn't even speak to him? It's a very long story and not really mine to tell you, to be honest. But it's not as bad as you might think it is. Anyway, he couldn't stay there and so he had no other choice but to move in here with us. He's just gone out for a bit, but he will be back soon. Why was this the only other choice? He could have found his own place, couldn't he? If he decided to move back here, why didn't he have something lined up for himself before he made the move? It sounds like he made a pretty sudden decision to leave. He was living in Texas before, you know, and he didn't have much of a plan. And, um, he doesn't exactly have a job right now, so he wouldn't have been able to find his own place to live. <laughs> I don't believe this. So now I have two unemployed brothers living in my house? Is this some sort of joke? Hey, hey, that's not really fair. He's only just moved back to the state, so of course he doesn't have a job yet. And I am in the process of looking for one. And what's all this about your house? You said that before as well. This isn't your house. This is our house. No, that's where you are very much wrong. This is my house. I bought it with my money, and it is my name that is on the paperwork. I am the one paying off the mortgage and the bills and all the fees. That means it is my house. Once you get a job and start helping me pay the mortgage off, then we can talk about it being our house. But until that day comes, it is mine and mine alone. That's not fair. We're married, aren't we? Doesn't that mean that we share everything? Don't you dare start this right now, Harry. I bought this before we got married and we made it very clear, and you agreed on this, that this house is mine. I don't know if I think that's really fair anymore. I mean, you make so much money. Why do I have to help you pay the mortgage? I can't believe what I am hearing. I don't make that much money. The money is good, but it's not enough to also support now two freeloaders who have no jobs and to pay the mortgage. And I don't care what you think about it being fair or not. We decided that this was how it's going to be and I am not budging on that. If you want to call this yours, then get a damn job and help me pay the loan. Fine, fine, I get it already. I was just saying. Now, is there really nowhere else for your brother to go? No, there isn't. He needs to stay here at least for a while. Even I don't want him here permanently. Good, because there is no way that he would be staying here forever. Both of you need to find jobs and get a grip on your lives. Next time, you have to talk to me about a big decision like this. It doesn't just affect you, it affects me as well. Okay, sorry, I should have said something. I didn't want to bother you while you were at your conference, though. You did say that you were going to be very busy with it, right? I don't want to hear that kind of excuse. I know that's not why you didn't mention it to me. Well, how was France anyway? Do you want to tell me about it? No, I don't. I don't want to talk to you at all right now. Just leave me alone for now. You're up pretty early. I didn't expect to see you up right now. Harry always sleeps in and I kind of figured you would do the same. Oh, well, I won't be up for long. <laughs> I woke up feeling hungry, so I will have something to eat and then probably go back to bed. Nothing else for me to do, really. Harry and I have more in common than even you might think. I see. And have you thought about using the time to look for a job? Harry is supposed to be doing the same. You could both do that together. Maybe it would even be fun. Oh, I will get around to it. I just want to readjust to being back home sort of thing. I will get there, though. It's always in the back of my mind, at least. Is there really that much to adjust to? You aren't coming back from another country or anything. I don't think Texas could be that much different. Oh, but it's still a change all the same. I want to meet some people who I know from before. And I might even hear something about a job opening from them. That would be nice. Listen, Will. Harry told me that you won't stay at your parents' house because you're not on speaking terms. What happened for that to be the case? I can't really imagine why they wouldn't want to talk to you. What is this, an interrogation? Harry told me you work in the medical field. He never said anything about you being a fed. I think I kind of have the right to know since you are living in my house at the moment. You're wrong there. You have no right to know about that sort of thing. That's private information. I'm not going to just tell you whatever you want to know just because you asked me about it. I think that it is a fair question because it's the reason that you are here and not staying with them. I don't care what you think. I'm not telling you and that's that.
There haven't been any updates, Harry. What's going on with the job search? I have been waiting for some news from you. And with your brother as well. It doesn't seem like he is doing anything to get himself out of here. He should be able to stay as long as he wants. I don't want to rush him too much or to kick him out either, if that is what you're suggesting. I'm not saying that we should kick him out, even though he is always very rude to me and doesn't seem at all thankful. But he does need to get himself together and live his own life without my support. I don't see why I have to be paying for his food and all of the rest of it. I never got asked about it and I never agreed to it. Oh, come off it, will you? You're not paying that much for him. Yes, I am! And don't forget that I am the only one working and also paying for the mortgage, too. But the mortgage doesn't get more expensive just because he is living here. You would be paying the same amount whether he is here or not. You still didn't answer my question about finding work. You told me that you would update me when you started applying for jobs. So? Yeah, I know I said that. But what am I supposed to update you on if that hasn't happened yet? You haven't even applied for a single job yet? It's been a long time already! How have you not even applied for one? There just isn't anything good out there. I have been looking, I really have. But I am not going to demean myself by taking one of these crappy low-wage jobs. I think it's better to hold out until I find something that is actually decent. You should get something, anything, for the time being and then keep looking. You never know how long you might be waiting until you find one that you consider decent. Then that means that I also don't know how long I might have to work one of these crap ones for. Any job is better than no job. What's wrong with the jobs that are available? They pay almost nothing. Why should I have to work 40 hours a week and not even get a decent salary? That's a waste of time in my book. But you're getting literally nothing right now without one. You have to start somewhere. You promised me that you would find one. You asked me to trust you and I have. This isn't the time to be so picky. Just get out there and take whatever you can get. I did promise to get a job and I am going to do that. But I never promised you that I was going to get some low-level dead-end job either. I still have to have some standards, don't I? What would people think if they knew that I was working in some warehouse for pennies? They would probably think much higher of you than they do now. Now they just think that you're a freeloader living off of me. And they're not really that far off about it either as it stands. I'm not a freeloader. I am your husband. Are you really going to start this kind of thing again? All you do is nag and nag me about this. You're becoming just as bad as everyone else. I have the right to nag you about this when it's something that you said that you would do. And I will do it. Just stop pressing me so hard about it. This is actually making me not want to even look for anything at all. Don't even say that to me. You need to get one and soon as well. Oh my god. I know that. And I am going to do it. Just get off my back and let me do it at my own pace. Coming at me like this isn't going to change or help anything at all. Finally, I get to see you again. I swear there is more and more time between each time we hang out these days. You're not avoiding me, are you? I could almost swear that is what you are doing. No, of course I am not avoiding you, Lisa. I have been really busy and there is just a whole lot going on right now. By the way, where is Jackie? I thought that she would be here as well. Oh, not today, I am afraid. She couldn't make it. She was supposed to, but she sent a text just a little while ago saying that she had to cancel. It's just the two of us today, then. Oh, okay. Is everything okay with her? Nothing bad happened, did it? No, no. She just said that she wasn't feeling super good and that it was better she stayed home or she might have gotten us sick, too. That's nice of her to think of us. But she is going to miss out on some great food here. Her loss. Oh, so you have been here before, then? What's it like? I thought that you might have just wanted to try this place out. I've been here only once before, and it was a fair while ago. But the salads are amazing, and so is the coffee. Ooh, good to know. I don't usually order salad because they often are pretty bad and then too expensive. But I do love a good salad when I can get one. Anyway, what's been going on with you? How is it being married, then? Is it paradise like you expected it to be? Oh, God, no. And I never expected it to be paradise, either. I always knew that it would be hard work. I just thought that the work would be worth it. 
that I was willing to do it. And now you think that it's not? That doesn't sound like you. I'm not really sure right now. It's not like I am giving up or anything like that. Don't think that's what I am saying. But it is getting harder and harder to hope that things will change and get better. And I am guessing that this has something to do with Harry and his behavior, right? I'm not saying anything bad. I'm just asking you a question. I know, Lisa. And yeah, it is mainly Harry who is an issue. Just like you thought he would be. Yeah, yeah, you told me so, I know. Hey, I'm not going to say that. What's he doing? Or is the problem that he isn't doing anything at all? That's exactly what the problem is. He kept promising that he would find a job and I really thought that he would come through for me once we got married. But he hasn't been doing that at all. He thinks that he is too good for the jobs that are available or something like that. And then he says that he is just waiting for something actually good to come along. I told him that he should just get anything for the time being and then keep looking for something else, but he just ignores me and says that I am nagging him too much. God, what a tool. He could be waiting forever to find the perfect job. Actually, he will be waiting forever because there's no such thing as a perfect job in the first place. I know that, but he doesn't want to listen. I just want to remind him from time to time, but then he gets defensive about it. And then there's his brother. Oh my God. You wouldn't believe the mess that he has been causing. He has a brother? Have you ever mentioned that before even? I didn't even know that. I think I must have said something, but he was living in Texas, so there weren't many times when we interacted. I only met him a handful of times, and that was quite a long time ago, back when Harry and I first met. So what's his brother doing then? How has he entered the picture all of a sudden? I went away to another conference, right? I was away in France for a week. What? You went to France, you lucky thing? Tell me about that first. Lisa, I'm telling you something much more important right now. I can tell you about France later. Sorry, sorry. I got a little carried away. So keep going. You went to this conference and... And when I came back, Harry had let his brother move into our spare room. What do you mean? Without asking or telling you? Without asking or telling me. And I had only been gone for about a week, too. Jesus Christ! How did he think that was going to go well for him? It's your house, isn't it? Who does he think he is? I honestly have no idea. But I suppose he just assumed that I would have to put up with it because he has family. It would be one thing if his brother was doing something or working or whatever, but he isn't. Him and Harry are more alike than I would care to admit. I really don't like him. He's pretty rude to me and his parents won't even speak to him. That's why he is staying with us and not them in the first place. Why won't they speak to him? What did he do? It must have been something pretty bad, right? I don't know at all. That's the thing. Neither of them will tell me. They say that it's none of my business and brush it off. So you have two freeloaders living in your house for free who don't work at all and who are keeping secrets from you? Yeah, something like that. It wouldn't be so bad as long as Will, that's his brother's name, moved out. It's really hard for me to afford all the food, pay for the bills, the mortgage, and every other expense on my own. I don't make enough to support three adults on. I don't know why Harry thinks I just have endless amounts of money. He probably thinks that because compared to him, you do have endless amounts of money. And even if you could do that, there's no reason that you should have to do that anyway. If you could support three, then you should really be supporting me and Jackie so that we don't have to work anymore. Honestly, I wouldn't even be that much against that idea. It might be more fun living with you two and supporting you than my current situation. Oh, well then, I will have to keep that in mind. <laughs> yeah, but what am I supposed to do now, Lisa? Do you have any wisdom for me? I don't know, Laura. It sounds tricky to me. You know that I would just dump the guy in a heartbeat if he was acting like that. But you two are married now, and that's not really the same, is it? No, it's not exactly. Now that I have made this commitment, it doesn't seem right to just jump ship at the first hurdle. You say it as though it's not a big deal, though. It's a pretty big hurdle here from where I am sitting. The only thing I can think of is that you give him a choice. He either gets a job as soon as he can, like right now, go out and get one, or you leave him. It doesn't sound like he will do it any other way. 
You've given him plenty of chances to do it on his own terms and he still hasn't done a thing. I thought about saying that once, but I really don't think it's the right thing to do. First, I want him to actually go out and do it for me, you know what I mean? And then secondly, I think that anyone who gives someone that sort of black and white choice in a relationship is the one in the wrong. I don't want to be the person who is doing that sort of thing. It feels like manipulation. I can sort of see what you mean, but from my eyes it just seems like he is using you, which is way worse. I don't really know what else you might be able to do about it then. Just wait and hope that he changes. But remember that marriage didn't seem to change him. He was like this before as well. What are the chances of him really getting better? I don't really know. But there really is some part of me that really feels that he can and will do it. I know that sounds stupid to you, but it's there. This feeling. I do think that sounds stupid. But you should still do what you think is the right thing. Maybe you should focus on getting his brother out of there. You said yourself that you would be able to deal with stuff better if he wasn't there. I don't know how you might do something like that, but it's worth a shot, right? I think you're right. I'll have to think about it a bit more before I do anything, though. Otherwise, it will just seem like I am nagging him about the same things again. Thanks for listening to me vent, Lisa. I know that it must sound stupid because you already thought that this would happen. Don't worry about it one bit. What are friends for? You're right. Now, let me tell you about my trip to France. Harry, we need to talk about your brother and how long he is going to be staying here. This again? I told you that we're not going to kick him out. He has nowhere else to go right now. And this isn't up for discussion either. It won't change no matter how many times you try to talk me into it. I'm not talking about kicking him out tomorrow or anything like that. But I do think we need to set him some sort of time limit. If we don't, then there is going to be no reason for him to leave at all. He hasn't been looking for work, and why would he? He gets everything taken care of for free right now. We can say something like one month or five weeks from now or whatever it might be, he has to leave. Then he will have to find a job and save some money and then move out. I think this will also be good for him, don't you think? Don't you think that sounds like a good way to go about it? He gets a job in his own place and then we get the house to ourselves. Everyone wins. No, I don't think that. It just sounds like we're kicking him out but with a few extra steps. What if he doesn't find a job in that time? What if he doesn't save enough money? Are we going to still make him leave then? Because then he isn't winning at all. He's just going to find himself without a place to live. Well, I guess not. As long as he is trying to sort things out, we can extend it a little bit until he is ready. Then what's the point of the time limit in the first place? We're just going to extend it anyway, so why even bother setting it in the first place? Just to give him some sort of frame for when he has to leave or be moving towards something. Didn't you say yourself that you don't want him here permanently? I did say that, and I meant it. But he hasn't been here for very long at all, and he isn't really getting in the way, either. It would be one thing if he was drinking or trying to throw parties or whatever. Then I might understand what you're saying. But he's not. He just relaxes a bit in his room, and that's about it. But he's still an adult, Harry! He's almost 30, and he's acting like he's a teenager living with his parents! And I don't even know why he can't live with his parents because you won't tell me and get angry at me when I ask. Oh my god. I don't see why that is important. It's just some stupid detail that doesn't change anything. Listen, I'll tell you what he did, okay? Just a general thing. But don't ask me any more questions about it and don't tell him that I told you. Basically, to put it very simply, he stole some money from them, okay? And then there was a big fight and they don't talk anymore because he sort of refused to apologize. That's all I am going to say about it. I have already told you more than I really wanted to, so don't ask me any more questions about it. Are you serious? And you didn't think that you should tell me about this earlier? He stole from his parents? Well, what about us? What if he tries to steal from us? Well, from me. Aren't you worried to have him living here when he has a history of that? Jesus, you're acting as though he is a career criminal or something. He isn't a thief, okay? He stole something one time because he was young and stupid. That doesn't mean that he will do it again. I can guarantee that. Now, like I said, no more questions. And don't mention it to either him or my parents. Got it? Everyone would rather just forget about it and not bring it back up again. Okay, fine. 
If you say that it's okay, then I will have to take your word for it. But if you're not going to go along with my plan for giving him a time limit, then you have to think of something yourself. He hasn't been paying for anything and it's getting expensive. My finances are really strained. And I'm getting worried that if this keeps up that my credit score will end up dropping. That's going to be really bad for me. Fine. I'll think about how we can prod him a little bit. Happy? Is that what you want? I'm not happy, but that is what I want, yes. Oh, Laura, thanks for coming by. I am so glad that you could make it. I have been so excited for this all week long. That's okay. It's the weekend and I was really happy to hear that you were going to cook me some Thai food. I actually haven't eaten any since I got back from my honeymoon at all. This will be a nice throwback for me. Oh, that's okay, that's okay. I was really interested when you were telling me about how much you love the food. But I do have to admit that I did make something a little bit basic since it is my first time cooking Thai. I hope you're not disappointed. I don't think it can compare to anything that you ate while you were over there. That's totally fine. I don't think that I will be disappointed. You are always too modest, Kate. What did you end up making? Just a really basic green curry. There were so many different ingredients that I had to use that I usually don't. I wanted to try something that people say is simple first. Then maybe later I will be able to make something a little more exciting for you. That would be great as well. Maybe we could even try to make something together if you're okay with that. That would be so much fun. I would love to do something of the sort. Oh, is Michael not home today? I thought the three of us would be having lunch together. No, he's out fishing with his friends. It's a Saturday and they always go to do it. They never really catch anything though. I don't think they even try. It's just an excuse for them to go out and drink beers together. But I don't mind. It means I have the house to myself. That is always quite nice to have. I didn't realize that Michael was such an outdoors guy. That's because he really isn't. That's what I mean when I say that it's just an excuse. He doesn't do anything else that would be considered outdoorsy. It might be because the wife of one of his friends won't let him out to drink unless he has a pretext. Oh, I see. She must be rather strict with her husband. Maybe she could teach me a thing or two. I am sure that there is a good reason for it. Or maybe not. Who knows, really? <laughs> but I let them do what they want and I don't mind it at all. They need to have their fun as well. Anyway, enough about him. The food is actually ready. Come sit down and we can get started. Thanks so much. This really looks great. I can't believe it's your first time cooking it. It might look good, but the important thing is how it tastes. Give it a try. And don't be afraid to hurt my feelings. I want to know the truth. Hmm. This is actually really good. And I do mean that. The only thing I would say is that it probably needs more spice. At least a little, and then it will be even better. But this really does hit the spot for me as well. Oh, I know that, but I was just a little worried about it. I did put a little bit of chili powder in it, but I should really have used a fresh chili. I will do that next time. And one more thing is that the rice that you're using is maybe not the best for this type of curry. I think that they use something called jasmine rice, if I am not mistaken. Oh, I didn't even think about that. I was focusing too much on the curry itself. I just used whatever I found in the pantry. But I will look in the store and try to find it for next time. I'm sure that it's sold almost everywhere. At the very least, I have seen it in Whole Foods before, if my memory serves me right. But those are two really small things. The food really was lovely. Thanks again. You will really have to teach me how to make this curry one time as well. It's so comforting. I'm happy you liked it. I was feeling quite nervous about making it. And I will definitely send you the recipe. Maybe it would be better to just use the one that I copied, though. Oh, but you have to take a look at this. Look at this gift that Harry got for me. You wouldn't believe the shock I felt when he handed this to me. I don't think he has ever bought something this nice for me before. Really? Harry got you a gift? That doesn't really sound like him, to be honest. I'm interested to see what he got you. I know it doesn't, right? It was quite a shock, like I said. I thought he was trying to get me with another one of his stupid jokes, but I was mistaken. Check this out. He got me this beautiful handbag. Isn't it just incredible? 
I don't know if I have ever had something so pretty to myself before. Wow, that is very nice. Oh my god, is that what I think it is? Is that a Michael Kors bag? It is! Can you believe it? I have to admit that I looked up the price and it was over a thousand dollars! I have to say that I didn't really believe him when he was talking about getting a job and finally working like he should have always been. But it looks like he actually pulled through in the end. It must have been you who changed him finally. I'm not sure what you mean by that. But a thousand dollars? That's a lot of money for a bag, if you don't mind me saying. Where did he even get that kind of money from? I don't understand how he could have bought it, if you don't mind me saying. What do you mean? He told me that he got a job a little while ago, and this was what he spent part of his first paycheck on. I'm sorry that some of it went to me. I know that he should really have been using it all for you and your household, but I am quite happy about it. That's alright, I wouldn't mind, really. But I don't think he does have a job. He has never told me about it at the very least. We have actually been getting into lots of fights because he hasn't found one yet. What? How can that be the case? Could he be keeping it a secret for some reason so that he could surprise you? I don't know what would have been a better surprise than the news that he was employed. This is something that I will have to talk to him about. How was the lunch then? Any good? I can't imagine it was close to what we had in Thailand. It was good actually, but there is something more important that we need to talk about right now. Oh god, you're not going to start again, are you? I don't want to listen to the same thing over and over again. No, this is something else. Something came up when I was talking to your mom and I thought it was quite interesting. And I am sure that you will think so too. Okay, then what is it? I don't really know what you're getting at. Does this have something to do with me? It has everything to do with you. She showed me the bag that you gave her as a gift. Don't you think that's quite interesting? It was a very expensive bag as well. I never knew that you could afford to buy something like that. It was over a thousand dollars according to her. And you have definitely never shown any sign of having that kind of money before. Oh, is that what it is? <laughs> well, yeah, funny story, really. I just wanted to give her something nice, you know? I thought it would be something that she would appreciate. Oh, and she definitely did appreciate that. She said as much. She also said, though, that you told her that you got a job and used money from your first paycheck to buy that. Yeah, I did tell her that. Or something along those lines, I think. Now, you can imagine how surprised I was to hear from her that not only do you apparently have a job that I have never heard about, but it's one that pays well enough to buy her this sort of bag. I'm sure that would have been surprising, yes. I agree with you there. Harry, stop acting dumb already! Explain to me what the hell is going on! Do you have a job and you haven't told me? Have you actually been earning money and keeping it for me to make me continue paying for everything? I use my salary for everything for you and your brother while you have had money that you could be using this entire time? Is that what's going on right now? I swear to God if it is. I don't know what I am going to do to you. Calm down, calm down. That's not what is happening, okay? I didn't get a job yet. I'm not lying to you about that. I would tell you if I had found something. That was just what I told my mom. Then how did you get the money for the bag? Why would you lie to her about having a job? Why not just get one so that you don't have to lie to her? It doesn't make any sense for you to say that to her. And you knew that I was going to be there. Didn't you think that she would tell me about it? I don't know. I forgot that you were going to be there today until you reminded me yesterday. Jesus, I didn't want to tell you like this, but I used your credit card to buy the bag, okay? What? You're joking, right? You did not just charge my card that much money. Sorry, but I am not joking. I did. You're unbelievable! I am working here so hard all on my own to provide for both of us, and then also your deadbeat brother, and this is how you thank me? Why the hell would you do this to me? And did you think that I wouldn't find out about it or something? I always check statements at the end of the month. How did you think you would get away with something like this? There was a good reason, all right. I just wanted her to think a little better of me for once. You heard how she and my dad were talking about me when we came back from our honeymoon. 
I thought that if I got her a nice gift and told her that I paid for it from my salary, she would stop doing that sort of thing. I'm still waiting for this good reason that you had. What you just said is no reason at all. They have every reason to talk about you in that way. They are right. You keep saying that you will do this, that you will do that, but you never end up doing anything at all. They said that they would only believe it when it actually happened. And they're right to think in that way. I can't believe that you would go behind my back and waste my money. Or even worse, use my credit card and potentially ruin my credit score just to what? Get a few brownie points from your parents? You don't know what it's like to have your parents talk about you like that. Everyone says that sort of thing about me. And that's because you always act like that. You give them the reasons to think about you in that way. Don't try and act like you're some kind of victim now of unfair judgment. They are all perfectly valid judgments about you. I had heard it so many times from everyone around me. Everyone! And I still wanted to believe in you. I trusted you and this is what you go and do? Were you just always lying to me? Have you actually just been using me for my money so that you can live an easy life without ever honestly planning to change? No, of course that's not the case. I told you that I really am going to get a job and turn this around. I was always going to do that. It's just taking more time than I thought it would. Shut the hell up! I can't believe a single word that you say to me anymore. You disgust me. I ignored all the bad things that people said about you and gave you so many chances. Why couldn't you have just put a little bit of effort in for me? Don't be like this, Laura. Okay, I might have messed up a little bit, but listen, I will make sure to pay you back the money that I charged to your card, all right? Just don't tell my mom about any of this. Screw you! Even now you're only thinking about yourself. I don't even want to look at you right now. Where are you going? Laura? Laura, where are you going? Finally, there you are. I have been so worried since you stormed out like that. You didn't return any of my texts or calls. Where have you been? Where were you staying? That's none of your business and it doesn't matter either way. Here, take this. What is this? Paperwork? What's this for? How about you use your head for once in your life and read what it says? These are... divorce papers? You can't be serious. You want a divorce? Yes, I do. And I am very serious about this. I don't know why I chose to see only the good in you when it wasn't there at all. I should never have married you in the first place. I should have listened to what everyone was saying about you. They were right all along. How can you say that to me? Is this really about the bag? I told you that I was sorry and that I would pay you back, didn't I? You're overreacting. That's not a good reason to get divorced. It's not only about the bag, you idiot. It's everything. Everything. You do nothing but take, take, take. I work all day to keep this roof over our head, to keep us fed, to keep your stupid brother fed. And all you do is lie to me and give me false promises that you will change, that you will find a job and help me out. They're not lies. I am going to do that. You just need to give me more time to do it. Please, Laura, I can't lose you. How much time do I have to give you? I have given you more than enough time and I now know that it will never happen no matter what you say. And it's more than that as well. You're always betraying my trust. You didn't ask me about Will coming here. You didn't ask about buying the bag. You keep changing the goalposts when it comes to looking for a job. You're a fully grown man, Harry. But even so, all I ever hear from you are excuses and more excuses. Oh, this job pays badly. What would people think if I did this? Since when have you ever really cared what they think? If you did care about what they think, then you would have changed your life around by now. If you cared at all what I think, you would have just gone out and gotten the first job that you could find and then worked up from there. That's all that I was asking of you, and I know that it wasn't asking too much. I didn't need you to rake in a lot of money or to work in some fancy position. All I wanted from you was to show in some small way that you cared about me, about us, and that you were willing to do some work for our relationship. And you never did that at all. I can do that, though. I didn't know that you felt so strongly about this, I swear. 
I thought that I have more time to look for something good. Do you really expect me to believe that? That you didn't know that I felt strongly about it? I told you over and over again and it would just lead to fights when you got defensive. How could you not know that I was serious about it? That I really wanted this from you? No, shut the hell up! I will answer that myself. You did know that, but you just didn't care enough about it to act on it. This is the end. I have wasted enough time and energy waiting for you to change and become someone that you will never be. My expectations were so low, Harry, and you still failed to meet even them. You have two days to get the hell out of here with your brother. I am going to stay somewhere else. If you are still here in two days, then I am going to call the police. What? Two days? Where are we supposed to go? We don't have anywhere to stay. That's not my problem anymore. I don't care where you go. Sleep under a bridge for all I care. Laura, please. Just think about this for a second. I can change. I really can. I will show you. Laura! Laura? What are you doing here, sweetie? Is everything okay? No, Mom. Nothing is okay. Can I come in and stay here for a few days? Of course. Come in, come in. What's going on? Are you and Harry having problems? We won't be for long. I just told him that I want to get a divorce. I gave him the papers and told him to get out of the house in two days. Oh my god. I'm so sorry. Let me make you something to drink. Ian! Laura is here. Get in here and see your daughter. Give me a second to make some tea for everyone and then you can tell us all about it. Thanks, Mom. Laura! It's good to see you. I didn't know that you were supposed to come by tonight. What's wrong? Have you been crying? Yeah, Dad. Things aren't going so well right now. Harry and I are getting divorced. Really? Don't tell me that idiot actually wanted to divorce you, did he? No, of course not. I was the one who wanted it. I gave him the papers earlier today. I see. I'm sorry it had to come to that. What happened? You know that I always knew he was an idiot, but then even I hoped that he might have gotten his act together in order to not lose you. Here you go, guys. Some nice mint tea. It's good for when you've been crying, I think. You say that for every single hot drink, Mom. That's because it's true. Anyway, go on then. Tell us what happened. I won't give you all the details because it's more or less how you two probably imagined that it would go. But he never ended up getting a job and kept living off of my money with no sign of that ever changing. Then his brother came to live with us to do the exact same thing and I didn't even know about it before it happened. But then just the other day, and this was the last straw for me, he took my credit card and bought his mom a really expensive bag to try and lie to her that he had a job. It was over $1,000 that he charged to my card. I finally realized that he was just full of it and never cared about me at all. He was never going to change. He was never going to do anything that he said he would. I feel so stupid. Everyone told me that this was going to happen. Everyone could see what kind of guy that he was. So why couldn't I? Oh, sweetie. I am so sorry to hear that. But you shouldn't blame yourself for this. It's not your fault. People always want to ignore the bad signs that they see in someone they have feelings for. That's why they say that love is blind. I think that's where it comes from anyway. It doesn't matter because it makes sense. Now I can't say that I don't think that this is a good development. I know that it sounds harsh, but I am your father and I have always known that you deserve so much more than that fool. I know that it's hard and it's going to hurt you for a little while. But just know that there is nothing but good over the horizon for you. Thanks, Dad. And I don't think it could get much worse than this, to be honest, so anything will be good by comparison. I just wish that I had listened to you sooner. Then this wouldn't have happened. It's okay. What happened has happened, and there's nothing that you can do to change that now. You should focus on the positives only. One, you finally opened your eyes on our getting out of a bad situation. Two, you have friends and family members who care about you and will support you. And three, you were smart enough to have all the paperwork for the house be only in your name. Oh my god, you have no idea how relieved I am about that. 
It could have been so much worse otherwise. At the beginning, I almost felt bad that I didn't add Harry to the deed. But now I realize that it was the best decision I have maybe made for a very long time. See? Things are looking up already. Now you can stay here as long as you need. And I will come with you to make sure that they are out of the house by the time you told them to leave. Thanks, Mom. Thanks, Dad. I don't know what I would do without you. Hi, Laura. It's been quite a while. How are you? Are you there? Excuse me? Who is this? I don't have this number saved in my phone. Oh, I should have expected something like that. It's me. Harry. What the hell do you want, Harry? I thought I told you that I never wanted to speak to you or see you ever again. I know, I know. But I really felt like I had to reach out. Just give me a few minutes, okay? You better be quick. I got a job. I've been there for about four months now, and I guess that's what you would say is stable, right? It's nothing special, but they hired even someone like me without much experience. I am just doing sales for an insurance company. They're even making me wear a suit and tie. Can you imagine that? Okay. Congratulations, I guess. You are finally doing one of the most basic things required of an adult. Why are you telling me this? You know, I just wanted to sort of tell you that I really listened to what you said when we were splitting up. I wanted to show you that I had changed. That I can change. I know that it's only something small, but this was the main point that we were always fighting about, right? If I can change that, don't you think that I can change other things too? Laura, will you give me another chance? I promise that things will be different. They are already different. What do you say? I think you're a complete idiot, Harry. Did you really think that this would work? It's been six months since we split, or something like that, and now you try to come crawling back? This is too little and far too late. I gave you a hundred chances, no, a thousand chances to do the right thing before and you always let me down. I was so patient with you. I was so trusting and you disappointed me every time. Good work on getting the job. That's good that you're finally getting your life together for yourself. It really is. But your life will never have me in it again. You had me and now you have lost me. Please, Laura, don't be like this. I know that I messed up, but I can't lose you. I really will be a different person. Just give me another chance. You have lost me already, Harry. I'm going to block you now. Good luck. After I told Harry to leave the house and told him that I wanted a divorce, I came back two days later with my dad and some of his friends to make sure that he had actually cleared out. Luckily for me, he and Will were both gone and I didn't have to deal with trying to force him out of the house by calling the police or whatever else we might have had to do. He did try a few more times to contact me and convince me to stop the divorce process, but I was beyond listening to him at that point and the divorce went through. He also did give up fairly easily, as he has done with everything else in his life, so the divorce was smoother than I thought it would have been. I find it kind of funny how, after the fact, everything that everyone had ever told me seemed so clear and obvious, but I just hadn't been able to see it myself. I don't know if I knew myself deep down somewhere that he wouldn't really change and was just lying to myself because otherwise it meant admitting that I had made a mistake and wasted a lot of time with him. Whatever the case, I am very happy that I have now seen the light and have moved on with my life after all the things he put me through. I don't actually know where he and Will went to live after they had to leave my house, but I know that he didn't go to his parents' house. I talked to Kate later on and told her about the divorce and the truth about her bag and she was very upset about it. She tried to insist that she give me the money back for it, but I told her that she could keep the bag as a present from me and not worry about the money. She also told me later that Harry did show up once and asked to stay, but she and Michael told him to leave and they could contact with him, just as they had with Will. It's interesting that I still get along well with his parents and I still go over there sometimes to make some food with Kate like we said that we would. Needless to say, my friends and my parents are happy that this relationship ended, and I can say that I am as well. My life seems so much brighter now that I can focus on myself and not have Harry dragging me down, and I can't wait to see what the future holds. I was very surprised that Harry really thought that I would be stupid enough to believe in him again and give him another chance after he had let me down so many times in the past. If he really was serious about getting his life together, then good for him. 
but I would never be a part of it ever again. Thanks for watching! If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to see more content.